legs, concussions, and cramps. Team DC is knocking themselves out. Welcome to Tough Talk. I am Karen Bryan alongside Tough Season 1, a runner-up, a winner in our hearts, though, <laughs> UFC contender, Mr. Kenny Florian, uh, of course. Um, there was a lot of crying in the episode. There were a lot of ups and downs, one of the weirdest stare-downs. Um, re- oh, are you getting emotional, Flo? You- <laughs> it's just that... Yeah, it, and it only happens to both of these eyes. It's just okay. it's just the left and the right one that it happens just, to. And every once in a while, yeah. Okay, all right, Flo, we'll get some, we can get a tissue in the meat. Sit tight. It's just sit, the, it's the eye thing. It's not because I'm emotional. Sit tight. Uh, Flo, <laughs> tough season 23 winner and number nine UFC strawweight Tatiana Suarez and former middleweight champ Michael Bisping will also join us later on in the show. But we've also got an exclusive sneak peek of the next episode of The Ultimate Fighter. That is presented by Cerveza Modelo the official beer of UFC. That is in a little over 10 minutes from now. But first, let's bring in the head coach of Team Cormier and, of course, the UFC light heavyweight champion, Mr. Daniel Cormier, up in San Jose, California. Champ, uh, i got to ask, have you ever cried at a stare down like Delani did? No. Delani talked all that trash, and then when it's time, he wants to cry. Don't cry now, Delani. You asked for this. You talk all that trash. He talked trash to Tyler, to Luis. He talked trash to every person during the season. But then when it's his time to fight, he want to sit up there and cry. Look at him. He going to wipe his tears. <laughs> it was the hey. lights, DC. It was the lights. Yeah, that's hilarious. You know what the crazy thing was? He actually said, he goes, that was the worst thing that could have happened. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Yeah, and Alon and Richie, they had an intense stare now. But were you steering the pot here, DC? A little bit. Of course I was, man. Yes. That's what I do, you know? I, I uh... I tried to stir the pot with Tyler and Tuman earlier in the season, but it didn't work. And so I uh, I figured I might as well do it between uh, Tyler and uh, and Dulani now because Dulani was the guy that everybody kind of wanted to take it to over the course of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Well, with Alon, though, it did get pretty intense between those yeah. two. That well, You think that was maybe the most intense one of the season? Yeah, you know, those guys all had a lot of respect for each other, but when it's time to fight, they're ready to fight. So... Uh, Richie was ready to go. Uh, Alon was ready to go. And they got in each other's face. You know, um, Alon was a good guy, but he only talked to one guy the entire time because nobody else spoke Spanish. So could you imagine how mad he was living in his own world for a month when all he hears is us running our mouth the whole time? They're constantly losing. This dude was pissed off and ready to play. I bet, I bet. Well, listen, he was cl- crying for a different reason uh, on the show as well because Alon uh, got a free pass to the next round, but he still wanted to compete for folks. Let's take a look. Win, win, see? Win, see? I need money, man. Hey, hey, you, I am hey, hey, yo. I hey, wanna hey, yo. Hey, I need hey, money, hey, man. Hey, My hey, country hey. don't have money, man. I need money. All right, so, D.C., what did you think about the, how upset he got about the fact that he didn't get to fight? I thought it was very, very cool, honestly, because most people would be excited about a free pass and not having to keep that extra time in a competition that's so short. It's almost like, man, Alon was going to get to rest more going forward, and he didn't want that. You know, the kid's a fighter, he's a warrior, and he wanted to show what he had came to the ultimate fighter to do. Um, it was very unfortunate what happened with Richie. And Alon was, uh, you know, because he was supposed to fight him, he was, it was, it was essentially, it was, uh, he was like, uh, um, he, he, his disappointment was because of the infer- unfortunate situation with Richie. Um, you know, but he's going to get the fight and he's going to get up to fight with a chance to make it to the final. So, um, I think with time, he'll understand that even though it wasn't ideal, it still worked out in his favor. Now, now Richie pulled out of the competition with calf cramps, DC. Have you ever seen anything like that? Never, man. It it, it was the craziest thing because Richie was working hard the entire time. And then all of a sudden, if you watch him, his face changed. He looked real sick. I mean, we tried everything. You know, my strength coach, Chris Camacho, he had hot towels on him. He was shaking out his legs. And and I don't know, you know, I mean, this thing went on for hours, us trying to wow. figure out a way for Richie to compete because the UFC and Dana White, they wanted to give this kid an opportunity to fight. So they gave him time to try to bring his body back. But, man, his body was not 
reacting to any of the treatment, any of the things we were trying to do to get him in the octagon. And unfortunately, um, our number one pick didn't get the fight. So uh, we felt very good going into that fight with Ricky and Alon. And um, you know how the season's going so far. Uh, we felt like we were going to get another win. But sad for Ricky Smaller, man, because he worked his butt off the whole entire time. Well, you guys were going around trying to get the electrolytes right, trying to get the potassium level up. So do you think in the end it actually was just nerves? No, it was it was more than that. You know, um, he, he I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but there, there was something more to it than him just being nervous. Yeah, that was a real tough break for him. Um, right now, though, DC, I got to let you know, he has a leg cramp that we just cannot massage out. RJ Clifford <laughs> is in the troll booth scanning social media with the hashtag Tough Talk. Uh, what have you got, RJ? We troll it! Thank you so much, Karen. I actually prefer to put a cramp in this show style more than anything. Well, we saw something on this episode you just don't see every day. Let's take a quick peek. A former UFC heavyweight champion massaging a fighter's legs. Cain Velasquez was not afraid to go full physical therapist on poor Ricci, but DC, I'm curious, when Kane is massaging your legs, does he use the same technique? <laughs> I, I have he, to know. He, use, he uses, the, the only way Kane massages my legs is when he's kicking me and beating me up. He doesn't <laughs> massage my legs in a nice way. Trust me, i take a leg massage if I was cramping, but he doesn't generally do that. He massages my legs with leg kicks. <laughs> Very nice. I'm a karate chop guy myself. I do this for nice, pretty good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. All right, well, listen, RJ is tracking social media all show long. If you want your tweet to air, just use the hashtag Tough Talk and RJ will find it. So, um, guys, I want to put on the doctor's hats here for a minute and figure out what happened to Richie. So here he is leading up to his non-fight. Never been in this shape before. DC has a big team on being fit and cardio. In the last five days, I've run 30 miles on the treadmill before going to practices at the Tough Gym. So, uh, Richie, on that treadmill, uh, you know, w was he on that treadmill, like, for too long, you think? You know, there were some things that we did in training that I thought was good training, and maybe it affected Richie a little bit, because on the treadmill, we had him running on a little bit of an incline. And if your body's not used to that, maybe that was one of the uh, reactions to it. So I'm not afraid to say that maybe uh, some, of, some of the training techniques that I implied may have hurt Richie, you know, yeah. but he never, he never said, coach, you screwed me. He was always just grateful for the opportunity. Yeah, DC, it is kind of tough in a way. You know, your team is winning, but like you said, you're falling apart a little bit. Pena's out, Richie's out, and now Ricky Steele uh, has a banged up foot. But more importantly, you actually had to talk him into seeing a doctor for a concussion. Let's take a listen. At the end of the day, the competition is important, but much right. more important, your health. Absolutely. So I'm going to talk to him and see if we can't get you over to a doctor. You need to do it, Ricky. We let you, or we've respected your wishes to deny treatment, Yeah. but now you need to get it. All right? I will talk to the people. Yeah, so that's tough. I mean, you yeah. really kind of had to force him to go see the doctor and, you know, potentially lose his chance in the show. How rough was that? It was tough, but um, this guy's a father. You know, he has a family, and, you know, he's young. So his career is going to continue. And when a person starts to talk about things like concussions, you have to take it very seriously. So I needed Richie to know or Ricky, I'm sorry. I needed Ricky to know that there are things bigger than this competition right now. You went out there and you put on a fantastic fight, and people are going to remember that. Your health is the most important thing. Go get checked out. Let's get a public, uh, a professional opinion on whether or not you should be going forward in the competition. And, um, he listened to me. Yeah, it definitely was the right thing to do. And actually, we want to give viewers a taste of what concussion protocol is like. So we here are now going to play a game of tough total recall. When trainers think athletes may have concussions, they try to give them words to memorize and then see if they can remember them a little bit later on. So we're going to do that right now, DC, right here on the show. Uh, I'm going to give you and Kenny uh, a few words. Both of you have taken some shots to the head, let's be honest here. And I'm going to give you five words and see if you can repeat them to me later on in the show. Flo, I'm going to give you your words Ooh. first. Your words, Kenny Florian, are pencil, backpack, Milwaukee, purple, and October. And DC, your five words are delicious, camera, 
electric, sidewalk, and bird. Okay, so folks, those are your words. We're gonna see if you can repeat them later on. Don't go anywhere, DC. We are gonna talk to you in a couple of minutes and see how your training is going for that all-important Stipe Miacic fight. Folks, more Tough Talk is on the way.